When I was planning my thumbnail sketches, I was looking at a way of taking the viewer into my picture. And because it was going to be night and the horizon would all be very dark, I thought the best way was to use the building, the perspective of the building and the trees by making them go back towards the horizon to, to take the viewer's eye in to the picture. Hello. This project today is going to be all about doing a night scene. The subject matter is on this campus and it involves building and some trees. I've done some thumbnail sketches of different views but the one I have chosen is this one here where I have a building leading into the distance and trees that are also scattered around. The type of paper I've used is a very fine, thin watercolour paper. It's very smooth so that the charcoal moves easily across the surface. I've put another piece of paper underneath so that none of the imperfections on the board underneath will come through because they... I'm going to start with willow charcoal because it's soft, it's very easy to spread across the page and also if you make any mistakes you can get rid of those mistakes very easily. I'm going to cover the whole piece of paper leaving a margin at the side. I'm going to then blend it all together and give myself a mid-tone to work from. I will leave just an area of light where I know there will be a nice light spot in the composition. Now you can really cover this quite strongly because you are going to use a tissue afterwards. To merge it all together. Now with the tissue. We'll get a nice mid-tone. Now once I've done that, I'll take the willow again and I'm going to now put in the structures in the picture, the, the, the buildings and the trees, just to give myself an indication of where they are and that they are drawn correctly. I'll just do it fairly lightly to start with. And just over here with the trees where they're going to be too. You're not really going to see where the horizon is. I need to know in my own mind where it is, even though it's going to be very dark. Another building, so it will be very faint but I, I need to put it in. In the distance I can see there's a lot of trees but it's all going to be merged in the darkness so you're just going to see really a very faint shadow of trees against the dark sky. The fingers are very useful <laughs> for getting soft areas and also kneadable rubbers which are wonderful for taking out the darkness.
So you just got a distant sort of feel that there are bushes and trees out there, but very, very, very close to the sky colour. A little bit of light on the roof of the building. Just to indicate it's there. I'm going to just enlarge a bit on the trees. You can use the willow still, but just make it a bit darker. These are beautiful gum trees and fairly straight. I have a, a morbid fear of the dark. I'm looking at the, the landscape that I was going to transform into night. I thought about how I would feel and I would feel very uncomfortable but so I, I introduced the fact that there was light and life coming from the building and that would give me a feeling of being less afraid. So it was, it's a, a, an emotional reaction, really, to the subject. I'm now going to start using the compressed charcoal to get some stronger marks on my work. I grew up with the influences of the English masters, um, artists such as Constable, Turner and Gainsborough. Their techniques of creating an atmosphere and the, a mood in their landscapes really made an impression on me. Also the French Impressionists, Monet, Manet and Renoir, they put spontaneity and life into their landscapes, which is something that I try to do with my work. Uh, but for this project, A Night Scene, I drew my inspiration from James Neil Whistler, his nocturne paintings. He painted a whole series of night scenes, creating large areas of mysterious shadowy shapes in contrast to the small areas of light. And that's what I have tried to do in my work today. Just by using the charcoal on its side, you get some rather nice effects. This type of scumbling, really, a scumbling effect. And it's very good for foliage on trees. I'm hoping I'm giving some sort of a, a feeling of the night, sort of eerie, mysterious shapes in the background. Now it's the time again to come in with the kneadable rubber. I want the building to light up the foreground. The lights in the building will sort of fall across the path. In the end of the building, I'm sort of blurring it in to the dark. 
the light's not so strong there. I'm now going to stand back and look at this, uh, what I've done, because I feel as if I'm close to finishing and I need to know where to put the highlights. I'm now going to take out some of the charcoal on the trees with the kneadable rubber. This is just on the trees that the light would be reflecting on. A finer line and some details. The charcoal pencils are wonderful. You can actually make them very pointed for very fine detail. Pinch the kneadable rubber to the shape you want. You can make it so that you can take out a very fine line if you want to, the side of a tree. Now I want to get some lovely lights on this branch that's coming over. It's just being caught by the light. Keep on pinching it, sometimes it gets a bit too soft, it won't work. Now, just a few little highlights up here, we're just catching bits of the, the grass. Also here I'm using it just to show that there's a little bit of a light area here. It's lovely taking out the charcoal and leaving that lovely white underneath for the light. It's a satisfying feeling. <laughs> Just with the pencil, an indication of maybe the windows. Just very slightly though. Okay, once more I'll step back and I feel that that is finished now. You work too much on something, very often you overwork it and it loses its spontaneity.